the uh, so if we all agree that we do have to allocate e-flows, on what basis will they be allocated? What will be the objective? And all the e-flows, uh, whatever very minimum allocation or start in the process that we have done, uh, there have been some objectives which have been set for us on our behalf. And uh, uh, there are some publications which say that uh, e-flows are actually a matter of societal choice. So it is we who decide how much water our rivers should have. So, did we make this choice? Did we actually make this choice of having dry rivers? Probably we didn't. But uh, so basically, these choices have been made for us by governments, by private dam, dam lobby, and uh, has society actually made these choices? The answer is a bit no. We have not made these choices. Uh, Ravi ji also talked about the ecological management classes. There are some EMCs. Uh, it's it's a bit of a methodological technical thing, but there are. A number of methodologies actually depend on ecological management class and based on these EMCs, they decide how much water the river should have. So uh, there are A, B, C, D. Now, you know, this is, this, is very, uh, this is a very tricky business in a sense. EMCs don't just show what the status of the river is right now. They also indicate what will be the societal choice, what is the management choice that we are making for a river. So when you say EMC of C, it does not mean that a river is an ecological management class of sea. For example, in Lohit Basin, Lohit is uh, one of the free flowing rivers in the northeast. It's a very pristine river, unpolluted, uh, in a very beautiful form. And for that, uh, at the EMC, ecological management class, decided it is sea. That's not the class of Lohit. That is the class we are aspiring for. And we, as in, uh, if you go by the definitions, it's a society which is aspiring for that class. So that, this needs to be checked. Some of the most important prayas get an EMC of D. That's a highly, highly modified, uh, uh, degraded river. So is that, so uh, as we said, is that an EMC that we are aiming for? That shouldn't be an EMC which we are aiming for. If you see, it is, these are uh, 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 rivers in the upper Ganga are one of the most pristine rivers in the entire country. They have very little pollution, they are still untouched to a large extent. So, uh, and it's very strange that we don't see any protected area Nothing which depicts a class A, that's okay. Very little class B, what we see is domination of class C and D. These are the choices which have been made for us that rivers in Uttarakhand, in Upper Ganga, some of the most valuable, uh, precious rivers for Indians will be managed in class D. What does this mean? This means that they will be getting an extremely low environmental alloc flow allocation. So, are we, is this acceptable? And one of the things that uh, uh, Eclos Primer and all is one thing, but one of the things that uh, you know we are aiming for being here is that it, this is a very obvious gathering. There are people from universities, there are people from research institutions, from uh, IIT Roorkee, if I'm not wrong. Uh, in this gathering, you know, uh, these things need to be raised. These are the choices which have been made on behalf of people of Uttarakhand. So, HEC report is not going to look at social aspects. WIR report completely uh, says no to look at the social aspects. So who is going to look at the social aspects? Are they going to be looked at into at all? Again, as Raviji said that uh, WIA report talks about the minimum environmental flow. And they said that these, this, is, this should be only for environmental purposes, nothing else. Only for environmental purposes. Now rivers are not only for ecology. Rivers don't only mean diatoms, though they do mean that. They also mean Mahasi, they also mean... But rivers also mean riparian farming, they also mean boating, they also mean fisheries, and they also mean religious practices, especially in Ganga. I mean, if you can neglect the extremely, you know, the most important, crucial social importance of Upper Ganga, then where are you going to look at it in the entire country, if not here? As Ravi said, there are over 200 methodologies of calculating e-flows. Uh, we should get a reality check. We are not expecting any of the civil society organizations to actually know what these methodologies are. These have been devised by experts sitting in developed countries getting highly paid for that job. This is not a civil society's job. But we need to know that, you know, do these methodologies even try to address the problems that we have? There are only a very few examples. If you, if the research, especially the research organizations and the universities, if you take a look at the ACC report, uh, they have used five methodologies. They have not uh, uh, sort of come down on any one methodology for recommending e-flows for Upper Ganga. They have talked about, rambled about five methodologies and all of them have been, have seriously downplayed the baseline. They have assumed the classes as D. Uh, uh, they have, 
they have used a term called Q95. Uh, this is the older version, so I won't have it. Uh, it is called a 75% of Q95 allocation. What is Q95? The flows which are exceeded 95% of the times. So 5% of times the flows, these are very, very, very low flows. 75% of that uh, volume will be then allocated to the river. So uh, does it respond to community needs, the methodology, does it respond to community needs or does it only respond to Mahasir and crowds, which is good, which is very good in a way, but does it respond to any community needs about ethos or does it not? Does it include a multidisciplinary team of experts not limited to the government and the dam proponents? Does it do that? Uh, uh, was there any open... See, and uh, you know, we also have to keep it in mind that no, Suresh will of course be going into the details. There's something called the building block methodology, which is now uh, said as if it's the saving grace and it's going to do everything right to all the rivers. And, and all the dams are going to be justified because they have, they perform a building block methodology. Uh, Suresh and WWF has actually written a critique of it, that what the proponents claim as building block methodology is anything but that. So it's, it's a very difficult and a very intricate uh, sort of a trap that we can fall into if we what the BBM actually does is it is it says that 20% of lean flow and 30% of monsoon flow. That is enough. When BBM was developed in South Africa, one of the basic things of the model was to have a multi-stakeholder platform. And each stakeholder, if I'm a fisherman, if she's a boatman, if there's someone else who's an ecologist, someone else who's an hydrologist, they tell what are the important flows. But what happens here is that one agency has five consultants who sit together and devise something called this BBM, call it the state of art methodology and the EAC and the NBAR, MOF is very happy to sanction the whole project. And even then, uh, any methodology is only as good as it is implemented on the field. And there should be an external, it, it's, it's very unclear how this and who can actually perform this role, but this role needs to be performed by someone who can actually monitor if the e-flows are being released. So uh, also monitoring mechanisms, it's, it's, it's very interesting, you know, if you read uh, the literature which is based on monitoring of e-flows across the world, what it means is there is a group which monitors what are the benefits of e-flows. Uh, is it actually performing all the benefits that it's supposed to have? Is the ecosystem downstream actually improving? That is the sort of monitoring. What monitoring means for us? Monitoring means to see whether the dam proponents are actually releasing the environmental flows that they ought to release. It is, it is that basic, because they are not. Uh, uh, Rahul is here and he will tell us about, uh, there was this uh, one person high court committee in Himachal Pradesh, uh, which was constituted to look at dams and number of issues to do with dams. It, it also looked at environmental flows and it also looked at whether the dams are releasing 15% of the average annual flow or the mean uh, or the minimum flows if they are releasing that downstream. The committee visited 11 dams under construction. 11 dams for 15%. 15% is extremely low. It's low, it has no scientific basis. None of the dams, none of the 11 dams were releasing even this 15% uh, flow downstream. So that's the sort of, uh, uh, there's also Yamuna which is supposed to, at Tazewala it's supposed to, they're supposed to leave 10 QMEX for downstream. They're not doing that. Each riparian state, Haryana, Delhi, they're uh, releasing piecemeal and then saying that, but then we release finally 10 QMEX. So there's no one point where actually 10 QMEX is flowing through Yamuna. Now there's no basis for 10 QMEX. It's an extremely, extremely downplayed uh, figure. The point of the matter is that there is no monitoring and we cannot depend on the proponents to do the monitoring. Monitoring has to be done by the people who are most uh, directly impacted by reduced flows. If they are not a part of the monitoring team, then it's going to be very disinterested bureaucrats who have nothing to do with the river or the monitoring or e flows or whatever. There's also, uh, there's also this decision I talked with uh, Suresh about, there's also this decision about Allahabad High Court to leave 50% of the flows in Ganga and untouched and they should keep on flowing. To the best of our knowledge, nothing is happening. Probably some steps may be taken, but to the best of our knowledge, nothing is happening here. So, uh, so, so what we see is, uh, even at, uh, it's, at, it's at a very nascent phase. e flows in India is at a very nascent phase. And this is a very critical crossroad. We are looking, we are seeing that the methodologies that are being used, the monitoring that is being done, and most importantly, the objectives which are being set are not something which are going to contribute towards a healthy river or going to help the communities. And we should not let the dam proponents or the ministry get away by saying that they are releasing e-flows, everything is right with the world, 
please allow us to build more dams because we are uh, responding to environmentalists. What more do you have to say? So this is a very important junction and I think uh, civil society research institutions and universities have to perform their bit at this point of time. Because otherwise if we don't respond right now, then these things are going to get institutionalized in no time and then there will be, very interestingly, there are consultants who themselves say that e-flows cannot be changed once the power purchase agreements have been signed. So what are we more concerned about is uh, not the river or the communities, we are more concerned about the power purchase agreements which are being signed. And so uh, I think we need to keep all these things in mind, not fall into the trap of e-flows but still use the tool as effectively as we can. Thank you.